The average Mind of Steel viewer is aged between 40 and 60 years old and is unsurprisingly male. This is a show primarily made for male, middle-aged viewers. Welcome, you're my people. But there are some people who are somewhat outside that demographic, and I'm talking about that rare Mind of Steel viewer, the woman. And this episode is for my female viewers, because it features three middle-aged men talking about matters that pertain to female health. And who could be more qualified to speak on this subject other than myself, Richard Vobes, and the gentleman that Richard Vobes is about to introduce. German New Medicine. You may have heard of it. Yesterday has been a practitioner of this for eight years. He's been helping people. His name is Robert Jardin, and he says this is a paradigm shift. A paradigm shift is a sudden and transformative change in our understanding of a scientific field, usually brought about as a result of some kind of discovery that changes our understanding, that causes us to reinvent the practices within a scientific field. And the scientific field in question is oncology, the study of cancer and how it may be treated. A sober life and death field, one of the most difficult problems in all of biology, one that you might have to study at for decades before you even approach the outer portals of knowledge. Uh, something that the, the guest in today's show, Robert Jardine, clearly has not done. Because he is not a doctor, he is not a molecular biologist, he doesn't have a background in genetics or any scientific discipline. He is, in fact, a balding male who runs a bed and breakfast clinic in the Highlands of Scotland. But that doesn't seem to have weighed heavily on him. He doesn't question his ability and uh, the relevance of his knowledge and experience to this life or death question. Uh, in fact, he believes himself to be qualified because he has studied the works of uh, a 1970s German quack physician, a, a man who used to be an oncologist but was struck off the medical register because of his bizarre theories and even more bizarre pseudo-medical practices. So back in 1978, Dr. Hammer, studying as an oncologist in a cancer research clinic in Germany, and he received some devastating news that his son had been shot. His son died in his arms in December in 1978. He developed testicular cancer. Testicular cancer, so they removed one testicle, and that pretty much got him clear of it. If this were a better, more pleasant kind of show, we would be celebrating the fact that uh, people can be cured of these cancers, and then we would end the show congratulating all the doctors, the, the physicians, the, the, the scientists whose discoveries made that possible. But this is not that kind of show. Remember, this is Mind of Steel, where we celebrate some of the world's most ludicrous conspiracy theorists. And even though the conspiracy theorist that Robert Jardine is talking about is someone who died in the year 2017, his legacy unfortunately lives on. And that is why The Richard Vogue Show exists. It, it is there to perpetuate some of the stupidest conspiracy theories ever. Which he wondered if the trauma of his son had caused his cancer. These do seem like completely unrelated, independent events. The tragic death by shooting of Dr. Harmer's son, followed by his own contracting and eventual cure of testicular cancer. They don't seem like related things. Uh, but I guess Dr. Harmer pondered if they might have been causally related. And, and, and so did I, actually, just the other day, as I was sat on the toilet, and just as I was about to squeeze one out. I was in uh, the middle of the process. The turtle's head had fully emerged and it was eagerly awaiting its once-in-a-lifetime migration to the cool waters below. It was that moment when the doorbell rang uh, and uh, presumably there was a courier outside waiting to deliver something. And I wondered at that moment, was it the fact that I was on the toilet that caused the courier to ring my house's doorbell? Could these have been causally related? It's a thought 
entirely as preposterous as Dr. Harmer's idea. But uh, for me, it was just a sort of ridiculous, comedy-adjacent bit of observational humour that I thought I might share with you, uh, based on the, the common understanding that we all knew that I didn't believe this. But for Dr. Harmer, it became the entire underpinning of his philosophy, one that he would go on to build a quack pseudo-medical practice about, specifically focused at treating that most deadly form of cancer, breast cancer in women. Every woman with a, a condition would have a, a lesion in the brain in the exact same place. And on further questioning, they'd all suffered a similar type of life conflict. Dr. Harmer observed that every single woman in his clinic who had breast cancer had previously suffered some form of traumatic life conflict. And so he assumed that it was the traumatic conflict that had caused the cancer, just as the, uh, the tragedy of losing his son may have caused his own testicular cancer. Neglecting to consider the possibility that there was an obvious selection bias in the anecdotal evidence from which he formulated this bizarre theory. It was uh, simply the fact that this was 1970s Germany, only a few decades after the conclusion of the Second World War, possibly one of the most traumatic conflicts in the entire history of humanity. So at that time, it was probably impossible to find anybody under 30 years old who hadn't encountered some form of traumatic life conflict. Uh, that seems to have been a fact that Dr. Harmer completely ignored, and also one that uh, Richard Vobes and Robert Jardine seem to be completely unaware of. There's a connection between life conflicts and a lesion in the brain, and that part of the brain seems to control that specific tissue, so... If this was a more enlightened era, I could stop the podcast right now. We would simply point out that it is entirely ludicrous that these two middle-aged, bold idiots, the, the, this pair of numpties who are so far to the right on the Dunning-Kruger scale that they provide perhaps the, the most pressing example I think I've ever seen in my life. These people who uh, are presuming to advise their viewers about the nature of one of the most difficult scientific questions that has ever faced human biology and medicine. We'd all laugh it off and say how utterly ridiculous this is. But unfortunately, we do not live in that time. We are not so blessed that we can ignore this kind of blatant nincompoopery. So we must wade ever deeper into the mire. We, we must, in fact, examine every clod of brown substance that is smeared and blocking our way. We must wallow in it. We must pick up the filth and smear it all over our clothes, on our faces, on the walls. We must become the living embodiment of Richard Vobes' nightmarish vision. The conflict that seems to trigger it is like a, what he called a nest worry, where the woman's worrying about something she cares for, like as a child or a, as a grandchild or something like that. This says far more about Dr. Harmer than it does about any of his female patients. He presumed that this uh, nesting worry, the act of compassionately caring about a grandchild or, or, or a child, or possibly a friend, might have been the cause of a woman's cancer. Uh, what he's saying is that basically being a normal adult, being somebody who exists within a network of, of friends who care for each other, the normal kind of human existence, that is what causes cancer. Which is about the most useless observation any pseudo-medical quack might ever have made. And if Robert Jardine and indeed Richard Vobes were paying attention to the things that were coming out of their stupid mouths, they might have noticed that this, as a, a sort of diagnostic heuristic, is about the most worthless thing that any human being has ever come out with. It is literally so mind-bendingly stupid that, that only a, a true imbecile could, could conceive that this was a, a great and wonderful thing, it, let, let alone the paradigm shift that Robert Jardine claims it to be. 
Um, so his next discovery was that if he was able to help the woman resolve that emotional conflict, both the brains, the brain lesion changed overnight. Wow. And, and the cancer reversed itself and the body got rid of the cancer. So according to former Dr. Gear Harmer and Robert Jardine, his modern day protege and uh, practitioner of Germanic new medicine, the reason why women develop breast cancer has nothing at all to do with the, the, the complex biology of that kind of tissue. It has nothing to do with the rapid rate of cell division, the, the, the wide variety of cell types, or even the, the complex structures and their interactions with, with the, the many hormones present in the human body. None of that is apparently the cause of breast cancer. It is, in fact, that women are silly and emotional. And it is that nesting trauma that Jardine just spoke of, that the fact that a woman might care for a, a, a child or a grandchild or possibly even a friend. In fact, it is women's silly, caring nature that is the cause of their own cancer. If only women were more like Dr. Gear Harmer and Robert Jardine, then there would be no cancer. But um, luckily, women, he is here to cure you, whether you like it or not. The, the final discovery was that um, what we know as disease are not diseases. This completely bonkers idea is actually one of the most fundamental concepts in the pseudoscientific quack theory of Germanic new medicine. The idea that diseases aren't actually diseases. They're, they're not the result of uh, infections that are causing us harm. In fact, they believe that infections are actually the body's way of curing itself. They believe that a, a cancer, for example, if Richard Vobes, after smoking his pipe for, for many years, develops a, a tumour in his lungs that, that grows into a, an aggressive form of cancer. Well, apparently, that tumour is merely Richard's body's way of correcting for some kind of shock. Possibly, I, I'm imagining, the shock of uh, the fact that none of his children will talk to him anymore, and some of them have even emigrated to a different country in order to avoid seeing him. That kind of shock. Perhaps the cancer is the body's way of restoring some kind of balance. Perhaps if Richard Vobes' children know that their dad has cancer, they might journey back to the country where they were born one last time to, to check in on the old man. Although I suspect maybe not, and the reason why I shall reveal in a future episode of Mind of Steel. It's an entirely preposterous idea that is about as sensible as the idea I dreamt up on the toilet just a few minutes ago. Well, any disease, I mean literally any and every disease, you can actually see uh, the, it being created by a brain relay. Because what happens is, when the psyche of the person receives the impact of the emotional shock, a very, very faint ring appears in the brain around a specific area. Robert's own behaviour might be confirmation of Germanic New Medicine's core tenet. Imagine if, if this behaviour that we see today, this bizarre pathology of spouting complete nonsense, could this be a psychological delusion formed by a trauma conflict, specifically the trauma conflict of being told by people with a modest amount of scientific education that he is in fact a quack and a charlatan. Is that possibly what has propelled the, him into this, what appears to be a, a series of delusions, the, the notion that he, he thinks he can pronounce on these subjects? Possibly even the loss of his hair. In fact, could it also explain the loss of Richard Vobes' hair? It's just as plausible as any theory that Robert Jardine has been expounding today. How do you help somebody? Well, with somebody who presents with a super healthy healing symptom, the first thing that I would be inclined to do was shake their hand and say, well done. Give them a pat on the back and a hug and say, well done. You've resolved that. Your body's now healing. It's swelling up. Congratulations if you have stage four cancer. This isn't, as you may have previously been told, 
a life-threatening condition which might cause the, the termination of your life within a matter of days. It is, according to Robert Jardine, a super healthy healing condition that, uh, that is the sign that your body is finally cleansing itself from this uh, conflict trauma, that the kind of thing that uh, Gear Harmer previously uh, identified as the cause of his own testicular cancer. If your body is swelling up, or parts of you are melting away, or have turned blue, green, or brown, or any other unusual colour, if you are suffering agonising pain, or possibly an entire absence of sensation in a major limb or body component, well, it can only be a good sign according to the theories and tenets of Germanic New Medicine. For example, the breast cancer I, rem I, I, I talked earlier, the body is trying to create more breast gland tissue to feed the stricken child. It's, it's, a, it's a sort of prehistoric function um, that we've inherited through, through a, a long, long process of evolution. And, and as our body has evolved and we've become more complex creatures, you yes. know, from when we first sort of crawled out from under the stone as some kind of insect a long time ago. Robert Jardine just said that he thinks our species evolved from insects. I can't work out what is dumber. The, the sort of Kent Hovind, young earth creationist view of the world, who, who believes that uh, human beings didn't evolve at all, and that we were all specially created by uh, their sky daddy type figure. Or Robert Jardine's version, who seems to accept some version of evolution, but it's one that was born entirely from his own imagination. Yet another creative contribution to science. Possibly, if true, another one of those paradigm shifts that he was talking about at the beginning of the show. If the man in the cave got clubbed by somebody in a fight, well then his wife, her dominant breast would have developed the breast cancer to increase the milk secretions to help nourish him back to health. Internet Rule 34 states that there is no subject, no matter how obscure, that cannot be transformed into some form of pornography. And we just saw Robert Jardine do that. He, he was a, apparently explaining some kind of medical principle, but what I think he was actually doing was recounting some kind of sex fantasy that he had recently read and possibly um, become excited to on a FetLife forum. This is clearly not a historical thing that happened. This is what happens if you learn about gender relations exclusively through the medium of pornography. Dr. Hammer redefined disease. It's not really a disease. There's nothing wrong. It's the body doing something. So he, he actually says that disease is just an attempt for our, our bodies are making to heal our life. If you're a female viewer of Mind of Steel who finds herself blessed with the, uh, the lucky, lucky, healthy breast cancer that uh, Robert Jardine describes as merely your body's attempt to cleanse itself from a, a prior conflict trauma. Well, after you've finished celebrating, once you've drunk down that celebration-sized bottle of baby sham, the next thing you have to do is consult a practitioner of Germanic new medicine. Don't be approaching a, a traditional health specialist, for example, a licensed physician or a, a you know, clinic that specializes in the treatment of cancers. Not according to Gear Harmer, the founder of Germanic New Medicine, and also not according to Robert Jardine, his protege and student. You must undergo a series of psychological counseling sessions in order to understand the true nature of the psychological trauma which allegedly caused your cancer. Her biological brain, the psyche, has to register that that conflict is now over. And then, okay, then the body will remove that cancer from itself using tubercular bacteria and fungi. That's what it uses. According to Robert Jardine, the only thing that is more super healthy than having breast cancer is having breast cancer, which is subsequently infected by both a bacteria and then followed by a fungal infection. It's a sort of 
trifecta of health that you can only get, presumably, if you spend a, a few months at Robert Jardine's bed and breakfast. Uh, and if you are so blessed, if, if that is how fate's lucky fingers point in your general direction, then uh, you could be even more blessed with perhaps the most natural of natural healthy outcomes you could ever imagine to, to this um, exciting lucky gift you have been bestowed with. Or a cow, a cow yes. in, a, in, a, in a field, right? It, if it, it has it, the, it the, the, the segment of the udder just rots out and falls off. And the cow's fine. The cow doesn't worry about it. And so, ladies, what Robert Jardine is saying is that you should be more like that cow who allows one of her udders to simply become cancerous and then rot away. It's nature's medicine, and that presumably is what Robert Jardine and uh, ultimately Dr. Reich Gierhammer, the founder of Germanic New Medicine, had in mind for you. If you choose to put your faith in Germanic New Medicine, you can expect parts of your body to be rotting away, and you should be happy about it, because it's merely a super healthy expression of your body's wish to uh, cleanse your psyche from those traumatic, shocking incidents that may or may not have taken place earlier in your life. Right, and the, and the prehistoric woman would not have had the NHS and oh. the, the options of all of that, and, and their... Um, very kind, very beneficial, very lovely words of wisdom to make her fearful that what was happening to her body was not natural. According to Richard Vobes, science got it wrong by attempting to explain cancer in a rational sense, by attempting to understand the complicated web of cell signalling pathways that cause cells to mutate, maybe to form into tumours and then into aggressive cancers. This was all a wrong and ultimately foolish endeavour. According to Richard Vobes, the correct thing to do is to keep women entirely in the dark about the dangers of the cancer that they may fall prey to. In the manner of a Paleolithic woman, somebody who has absolutely no knowledge or understanding of the biochemistry that might eventually kill her. Why this is? Well, according to Richard Vobes and Robert Jardine, we would all be better without the emotional trauma of learning about our own mortality. If we were ignorant of that subject, according to these two idiotic men, we would all live longer lives. That is the, the, the quandary, the paradox of our own knowledge. The more we know about our mortality, the more, according to these men, our knowledge is likely to kill us. That if you resolve it, that person will have a fatal heart attack within several weeks. Um, Dr. Hammer's on record of actually advising one gentleman to drive past the factory gate where he was un unfairly dismissed and to sit there and brood over that unfair dismissal. He had to do it every week to keep the angina going. I'm sure you will be thrilled to learn that Robert Jardine doesn't just offer patronizingly incorrect medical advice for his female customers. There's also potentially life-threatening bad advice for male customers as well. That was one example of it. The notion that one must prolong one's angina by uh, repeatedly exposing oneself to whatever um, threat stimulus apparently caused the angina in the first place. Angina being a potentially life-threatening condition that's also very painful, caused by clogging or blocking of the coronary artery. It's a very silly thing to prolong because it can be treated to some extent with modern medicine. But that's the problem with Germanic New Medicine. It's a cult-like belief that encourages its devotees to spurn modern medicine, even in cases where modern medicine can provide very effective treatment for some conditions. Uh, but if you do want to uh, experience Robert Jardine's healing touch, well, this is where you can get it.
me and my wife, we actually offer like a bed and breakfast type of thing. You know, people come stay with us and they get therapy with me. It's much better than doing it over Zoom. There's a practical solution to that problem that you can advise the person, okay, go and shake hands with him or go and, um, you know, go, go and do something or other practical. Imagine if whilst Richard Vogues is smoking that pipe, some of the toxins from the combustion products aggravate one of the cells in his lungs epithelial lining, which in turn causes a mutation, which causes a series of uncontrolled cell divisions, eventually forming what you and I might refer to as a form of lung cancer. What will he do? Will he get himself to the NHS who have all kinds of scanning equipment and uh, surgical techniques that could remove that cancer and then uh, subject him to some form of uh, therapy that might ultimately prolong his life? Or will he drive his van with his, uh, his friend, the purple-haired enabler, Julia, uh, all the way up to the highlands of Scotland uh, and find Robert Jardine's bed and breakfast, where he and his wife will look after him, perhaps ask him psychological questions to get to the bottom of whatever it was, the, the conflict shock that may have led to the, the formation of that, uh, that lung cancer, uh, at least in, in the, the way that uh, Germanic New Medicine proponents tend to think about these products. Which will Richard Vobes do when his lungs eventually succumb to the, the toxins that he is pumping into them on a daily basis? I, I couldn't possibly answer that question, but um, one day we will all die. But let it not be with the assistance of Germanic New Medicine. That is all I could wish for my beautiful viewers of Mind of Steel, including the two or three remaining female viewers who haven't tuned out just through sheer exasperation of this utter, utter twaddle.